Hey guys, this Colocasia black magic is a part of the elephant ear family. These plants can grow elephant sized leaves that can reach anywhere from two to three feet long and wide. But for me, it's this deep purple or black stem and foliage that gets me every time. Colocasia esculenta, or simply black magic, hasn't been the easiest plant for me, but it's taught me a lot and I wanna share all of that with you. So if you're interested in knowing everything you need to know to care for this magical plant, then stay tuned. I'm going to be sharing crucial care tips in terms of lighting, watering, soil mix, humidity, and any insights I've gained since caring for this beautiful plant. Thanks for checking out this video. I'm Tyler, and if you like what you're seeing or you find this video to be useful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, or better yet, you can subscribe to my channel. So first things first, I've had this plant for a while, and it's actually grown uh, quite a bit. Um, I got it when it was pretty little, and it's probably doubled or tripled in size. But unfortunately, this plant had a nasty case of spider mites. Shortly after bringing this plant home and uh, taking a closer look at it, it was basically overrun by mites. Luckily, at the time, it was spring, and I was able to move this plant outdoors and treat it for the mites. And at that point, I was basically unsure if it was going to even survive. It's obviously pulled through, so thank God for that. Clearly, in my experience, mites love these plants, and one of the only other plants that I've had a really bad case of spider mites was one of my alocasia, so go figure. So obviously, watch out for spider mites. Be thorough when you are maintaining or caring for your plants when you're watering them. Um, check under the leaves, check the stems, but Ultimately, make sure that you're, you know, giving your plants a once over um, when you're at the nursery as well. Anyways, let's jump into some crucial care tips and details when it comes to caring for black magic. Elephant ears are tropical plants, and as you can see, they have this gorgeous heart-shaped leaf shape. Elephant ears are tropical plants, and as you can see, they've got this gorgeous heart-shaped foliage. Now, if you live in the tropics, good for you. You can expect these plants to reach full size. That's two to three feet um, in length and width for just the leaf alone. Um, actually, pretty quickly, probably in two or three months. If, however, you don't live in the tropics and you live somewhere like I do in Boston, for example, well, you're going to need to adjust your expectations. Now that my black magic baby is back in good health, I'm curious to see just how big it will get. If you're interested in more content like this, give this video a thumbs up or leave a comment down below. To really show me some love, click the bell for alerts and notifications for future content. Elephant ears are native to the wetlands, so watering these plants is especially important. You're gonna to want to do your best to keep the uh, soil for your black magic consistently uh, moist, and you're gonna to wanna to do your best, obviously, to avoid letting the soil uh, completely dry out. So basically my advice here is use your finger to touch the topsoil of the plant and if it is not moist um, or have some moisture in it, then that is a important indication that you need to water this plant. Now obviously your conditions will dictate how often you should be testing the soil, but uh, I would suggest anywhere from every other day uh, potentially to every day. Now, soil composition can obviously help with water retention or keeping the soil nice and moist. And I'm going to actually be repotting uh, mine after the care tips. So if that's something that interests you, uh, stay tuned for that. In terms of lighting, black magic can uh, be anywhere in full sun to partial shade, but ideally you're going to want to have this plant in dapple sunlight. Now, it is important to mention that the variety 
variety of elephant ears that I have here, black magic. They do need uh, a little bit more consideration when it comes to sunlight, um, and they may need a tad bit more light, and that is to help, obviously, with the coloration and help those leaves turn to that dark, deep, purpley black color. So if you are troubleshooting in terms of the foliage color, uh, it's most likely a light issue. And new growth does come in this sort of beautiful light green color and over time, as you can see, the stem and, as well as the leaf will begin to turn that purpley black color. And again, as these are tropical plants, um, they do appreciate some humidity, so if you are able to provide that, it's all for the better. And finally, before repotting my black magic, these plants can and should be fertilized. A fertilizer high in nitrogen will work best. All right, guys, so my Alocasia black magic is basically outgrown its uh, original pot, so I need to repot it in a slightly larger pot um, only about an inch wider, inch or two wider in the um, diameter. Now, uh, one thing I am changing is I'm using a slightly different soil mix. Um, so I've kept the perlite, the coco coir, and peat moss um, the same. Uh, these plants do like a slightly acidic soil, but I've gone ahead and added also um, about so all of those things that I just mentioned are about one to one and then I've gone ahead and added two or three parts of um, a you know really good indoor rich organic potting mix that I pick up from one of my local nurseries um, and that's just really going to help with some of the water and moisture retention and add a lot of organics to this mix so uh, let me go ahead and add uh, that some to the base of the pot and then just going to very carefully all right guys tons of roots this thing was crammed in there so i'm really happy to be repotting this into a slightly larger pot with the slightly different uh, soil mix so i'm just going to go ahead and fill in the gaps i'll be right back all right so nicely uh repotted into this new pot don't forget to uh, give it a nice watering. And one other quick pointer, um, you can prune off any dying or uh, dead stem and leaf, so don't be afraid uh, to do that. Well, that's it for me. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Oh yeah, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Until the next one. Smell the roses Try hard not to lose focus There's too much to do Reap what you sow you